that's all for now from Big Booty Yoga. Next up on Hex TV, it's tonight with Alex Hexagon. From London to your living room, this is Tonight with Alex Hexagon. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you're too kind, thank you. And welcome to Tonight with Alex Hexagon. I'm Alex Hexagon, and tonight we'll be having a bit of a chat all about nostalgia. Now, nostalgia, for the five people who don't know, is the bittersweet longing for things, persons, or situations of the past. And believe it or not, folks, but I actually remember the first time that I ever felt nostalgic. Would you like to hear the story? All right, then. Back when I was a child, in my old neighbourhood, there was a small store that sold sweets, or, as people would say abroad, candy, that was owned by a single old lady who managed all its affairs. However, her store ended up running into some financial difficulties because a much larger corporate megastore had opened up just a few steps away. And, because of economies of scale, this much larger megastore could get way better prices on sweets than hers could. And so, within a few months, she was forced into bankruptcy, and her store shut down. Not only that, but the building that once was the store was even demolished completely to make way for some new housing complex. In the end, it was essentially like this store had never even existed, with no trace of it left behind whatsoever. No trace, of course, except my memories. For as bizarre as it sounds, a few years later, I remember being up one night where I started thinking back about this store and feeling a sense of wanting. Nostalgia. The idea that there was a place that once made me happy, that now no longer existed, and that life had simply moved on, made me feel very sad indeed. But at the end of the day, there was no turning back the clock, and thus no point lingering on it for even a second further. And that's just how we deal with such memories. We think back, feel a bit bittersweet, but then move on, because ultimately, we have no other choice. However, while this may be the case today in the 1990s, this may not necessarily be the case 30 years from now in the 2020s. As recently, researchers from the local Institute of Sociology have predicted that the nature of nostalgia may be about to change forever. As whereas now, nostalgia mostly comes in the form of bygone places or people, which cannot be accessed barring the deepest recesses of our memory banks, such as my store example just then, in the future, they believe that nostalgia may mostly come in the form of consumable media, partly due to a large increase in accessibility. Today, if you want to listen to a tune you like, you either have to wait until the DJ plays it on the radio, or head on over to the record store and buy the track physically, both of which are very inconvenient. But in the future, thanks to the newfound power of the World Wide Web, it's expected that we will be able to listen to millions of songs on demand directly from our home machines. This will apparently also hold true with movies too, whereby rather than going to the cinema or waiting for a physical release, you will be able to watch the latest flicks day one right from the net. And likewise with video games, whereby rather than having to go out and buy a cartridge, or go over to a friend's house to play theirs, you will be able to play any game, day one, without even having to leave your home. Every form of media is expected to become much more accessible in the future. But as a result of this, these sociologists believe that this will lead in tandem to a much more antisocial lifestyle whereby rather than prioritising real people or places, those of the future will instead start to prioritise such media, 
of which shall henceforth become their main reference point of nostalgia. However, this means that unlike today, the people of the future will be able to very easily go back to that of which makes them feel nostalgic, in the exact same condition as when they first experienced it. Whereby as a result, some may inadvertently get stuck into reliving their pasts over and over again via such media, to the point whereby they may even forget that they even have a future. Hmm. Well, you've got to say it's an interesting theory, right? However, are you really telling me that in the future, when people will have flying cars, robot maids, and colonies on Mars, that people will be sat there in their bedrooms thinking, man, I want to spend all day watching Seinfeld on VHS. I... I really don't know about that one. <laughs> for you regarding the switch to canola oil for the stadium popcorn and surprisingly it will only cost a half a cent more per bag so it is definitely doable and i have to tell you i i have never met anybody so efficient well thank you i'm flattered <laughs> i'm good at what i do <laughs> welcome to the future where we do nothing but think about the past there's two types of ways to experience nostalgia a nostalgia trip or a nostalgia trap. A nostalgia trip is nothing more than an innocent temporary look back at something from our past, to remind us of our roots, to demonstrate how much we've changed, to appreciate the experiences we used to have. These are completely normal and do no harm whatsoever. A nostalgia trap, on the other hand, is more of a permanent look back, whereby the person in question is seemingly obsessively stuck worshipping a period of their past, to the point where it starts to become a roadblock in their personal development. Which is, needless to say, very dangerous. How do you know someone's in a nostalgia trap? Don't worry, they'll tell you. Does anyone remember back in the 90s when... Does anyone remember back in the 2000s where... Um, does anyone remember back in the 2010s where... Um, does anyone remember... Um, does anyone remember... Does anyone... Does anyone... Does anyone, does anyone, does anyone remember when... They're always wearing... Their rose-tinted goggles. Wow. Whereby they speak of the past as if it was the greatest thing imaginable. But when it comes to the present, or especially the future, they aren't just pessimistic, they're nihilistic. People in a nostalgia trap act almost like they've prematurely died. Not physically died, or even mentally, but perhaps spiritually. Like some sort of ghost wandering around the world, stuck reminiscing about the days when they were alive. They listen to the same music, forever. They watch the same movies, forever. They play the same games, forever. Years could go by and they'd still be talking about the same period of romanticized bliss that they just can't let go of, while simultaneously sucking the oxygen out the room for everyone else, who dares to suggest that the present and future to come isn't all doom and gloom. And I've noticed that this trend really is the most prominent, not in children or in old adults, but young adults specifically. I've often thought that the 2020s is almost the polar opposite of the 1960s. As when you look back at the 1960s with the boomer generation, one can't help but notice that they, during their youth, were unbelievably optimistic for the future. And the reason for this was because when they became adults, they were, for the most part, in a time of economic wonders, good health, and, as the nickname for their generation implies, high fertility. Which, alongside a myriad of other factors, created an environment of optimism that was hard to escape from. But in the 2020s, when you look at the Zuma generation, one can't help but notice that it's almost the exact opposite whereby they are swarmed by an all-encompassing pessimism. Because when they became adults, they were, for the most part, in a time of economic struggle, bad health, and extremely low fertility. 
which, alongside a myriad of other factors, has created an environment of pessimism that is hard to escape from. And so it really only makes sense that, when young adults feel like their future isn't going to be so bright, that they may keep looking back nostalgically to their past, which often inadvertently entails reliving their childhood joys over and over again. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's noticed that references or remakes to creations of the past have become all too commonplace. To the point where it feels like these flashbacks to the past are actually somehow outpacing new creations. Some of the most popular tunes on Spotify are not new, but from decades ago, with a myriad of nostalgia playlists at your fingertips. Browsing the top-grossing domestic box office movies for 2023 also paints a picture of a culture that's heavily stuck in the past, with 9 out of the 10 top earners having their intellectual property roots in the last century. And trying to get to the bottom of Wikipedia's list of video game remakes and remastered ports would have you entering retirement by the time you actually got there. I gave up. But there's a good reason for it, however. It sells, because primarily young adults crave it. Bazingos! My favourite band is doing their 500th farewell concert! <laughs> Holy cannoli! A remake of a Moverino from a decade ago? <laughs> oh my god! There's a remaster of a game Arena I played when I was six years old? <laughs> but while this may be a lucrative business opportunity, Psychologically, this is an absolute disaster. As when you're a child, you're not strong, you're not smart, and you're definitely not that in tune with the world. And so, it's like you're on the tutorial level, trying to learn how this life thing works. But as you get older, you start to level up, whereby you become more physically strong, more mentally enhanced, and more spiritually attuned ready to take on some harder levels, as now, as a young adult, you're an upgrade to your past self in practically every regard. But when one lingers in nostalgia, it's like you're still on the tutorial level, voluntarily choosing to stay in the same place as you were when you were a child. They don't realise it, but what people in a nostalgia trap are doing is infantilising themselves. In the past, advancing into adulthood and the duties that come with it would be seen as a time for celebration. But now, due to people feeling like they can never match the expectations both they and society at large has for them, many would instead rather contract away in the past for a false sense of security. For when we were children, we don't comprehend time, duty or societal value as we do as adults. And so this subconscious craving for such childhood memories really doesn't have much to do with such actual memories at all, but is merely the desire to go back into ignorance. The ignorance of youth when life was much less complex. You can see this with some people in their 20s or 30s who can't believe how old they actually are now, as mentally their mind still defaults back to years long gone by, which is, more often than not, really just the time such people mentally achieved actualization, when they became an adult and thus truly aware of just how complex life actually is. And that's what being stuck in a nostalgia trap really is, a coping mechanism for those who believe they will never amount to anything in life. It's not necessarily a maturity problem per se, but it definitely is a confidence one. A problem that's becoming all too commonplace among young adults today. Especially, I might add, among young men. Why? Because women tend to associate more with people, hence why all the most female-dominated jobs tend to be people-orientated. And as such, women will tend to be engulfed with the more traditional nostalgia that revolves more around people or places. Men, on the other hand, tend to associate more with tinkering, hence why all the most male-dominated jobs tend to be tinker-orientated. And as such, men will tend to be much more engulfed with this newfound modern nostalgia gained via consumable media, of which is much easier to get nostalgia trapped in due to its direct accessibility. 
Go on YouTube and search for something even as innocent as Startup Sound and you'll come across hundreds of videos with millions of views filled with guys reminiscing about things like old movie studios, operating systems or video game consoles. Because nostalgia like this is really powerful and a lot of young people, especially young men, are ruled by it. I mean, hell, I even got my start on YouTube by inadvertently plucking on such nostalgia strings in the first place. In fact, dear viewer, it's worth noting that the only reason I was even inspired to make this production in the first place is because I couldn't believe in retrospect how much time, not just my peers, but even sometimes I myself spend lingering back in nostalgia from our pasts. And it seems we aren't alone. I did a poll where I asked you all, how often do you find yourself reminiscing in nostalgia? 20% of people said constantly, 58% of people said frequently, 18% of people said rarely, with just 4% of people saying never. To break this down further, that means that 78% of people say they experience nostalgia often, with just 22% of people who say they don't. Needless to say then, that nostalgia traps are something that desperately need to be addressed. So, what's the solution? Well, ultimately, dealing with nostalgia really is a matter of internal perspective. And thus, it all depends on how you want to see the world. And the truth is that for some people, there is no solution, because they are dim. D-I-M. D meaning to deny, to reject the idea that the future can be anything but unwavering darkness, and that there's absolutely nothing they can do about it whatsoever. I meaning to immerse, to plunge headfirst into negative influences, who hypnotise them into a state of nostalgic infantilism. And M meaning to marinate, to never pursue any long-term goals or capitalise on any of their passions, and to simply rot as if they are already a corpse. Those who are dim will forever linger in their past and spend the rest of their days pessimistically doing nothing but making everyone else around them as miserable as they are. But for others, those with a more mature mind, they, on the other hand, can be lit. L-I-T L meaning to liberate, accepting the fact that the world isn't perfect and never will be. But as you've been blessed with the gift of life, you may as well try to make the most of it and enjoy it while you still can. I meaning to immolate, eliminating negative influences around you, whether in the form of people, groups or businesses, who tempt you back into a state of nostalgic infantilism. And T meaning to transact, to find something you are specifically passionate about that you can tangibly turn into a profession, to not just sustain your existence, but put your focus into, to make yourself and the world at large better. Those who are lit will try to focus on their future and spend the rest of their days optimistically attempting to bring not just themselves, but also those around them into a brighter tomorrow. Those who choose to be dim will be forever nostalgia trapped, whereas those who choose to be lit will never be nostalgia trapped. So, do you want to be cowardly, whinging about how much better it was back in 1200 BC? Forever playing with your childhood toys that your mommy bought you? Refusing to accept that your fate is in your hands? Or do you want to be courageous, daring to dream for the future, putting yourself in uncharted territory and accepting the fact that your fate is in your hands? The choice is yours. I don't think many young adults realise just how low the bar actually is these days. It's kind of like how so many people are now overweight that even just not being fat, never mind needing to be muscular, automatically catapults you into having a top 50% body just by the virtue of it. That's how low the bar is now. The average young adult is now so pathetically dim that even if you're just a little bit lit, you're almost completely exceeding the status quo average right out of the gate. Peg has come to look at nostalgia as almost a neurological disorder that makes us resistant to change. 
this culture of infantilized adulthood, all these grown ass men arguing about f***ing superheroes online, and meanwhile the world is falling apart in so many different ways. And that's why we will all go to hell, because no one will grow the f*** up anymore. Statistically speaking, the average person in the Western world today is expected to live until around 80 years old. Which means that even if you were 40, there's still a 50% chance that you haven't heard your favourite tune, watched your favourite movie, played your favourite video game, met your favourite man, met your favourite woman, reached your maximum heights of wealth, maximum heights of power, maximum heights of fame, or, you know, basically anything that revolves around life experience, of which youth is not a limitation. Being nostalgia trapped really seems silly when you put it that way, doesn't it? So if you're someone who knows deep down that they are nostalgia trapped because they think their life ended at 20, then please, get a grip. For the past, it's gone forever. But the future, oh well for that, <laughs> that is in our hands.